It's my first Kramer. I love it when I get a guitar that screams at me. This is what you're doing this week. You're learning this. <laughs> or you're trying to learn this. Tuning, obviously, was you know, pretty suspect on this. I'm not disappointed to discover these things. There's a lot going on. I had no idea that you have to string this up without the balls. You have to cut them off. Ooh. We were trying to do a gig and you just got this. And your band mates wouldn't be happy. Let's put it that way. Never tried tapping before. I'm going to have a go now. Let's see if I can do it. Hello, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Guitar Easters. It's a first today. Well, in fact, it's a double first. It's my first Kramer first. My first, the first first is it's my first Kramer. Here it is. It's the, the Pacer Classic. It's, um, £399 retail price. It's an affordable guitar. But even more affordable still, the street price, this, 299 English pounds. But I only paid 199 English pounds on special offer. I couldn't walk past it. I thought, I've never had a Kramer. I'll get one. That looks fun. But... But there's more. I've never had a Floyd Rose before either. So this could be interesting because this is going to be a deep dive review, which means taking it apart, taking the strings off, and therefore restringing it again, which I'm told, <laughs> I'm reliably informed, can be a bit of a chore, shall we say. I won't say nightmare because I don't think it's that difficult, but a bit of a chore restringing a, a Floyd Rose because there's all sorts of stuff going on that well, I had no idea, to be honest with you. So we're going to get into that in a little bit. It's going to take a while, of course. So um, get settled. Go and put the kettle on, make yourself a nice cup of tea, get some nibbles, come back and chill out and, and join me as we, as, we, as we get into it. If you're in a hurry, though, don't worry. Timestamps are in the description box. So you can just skip forward to, you know, whatever interests you, you know, the swearing, or you can hear what it sounds like or, or whatever it is. So there you go. Without further ado, as they say here on the YouTube, let's get stuck in. Let's do it. All right, I've done some research, and according to Wikipedia, Kramer was born in the early 80s, 1981, I think, to be precise. And they lasted until the late 80s, 89, 90. I think they went bankrupt. Now, most famous player... I think, is is the Eddie, isn't it? And uh, I was trying to work out what model it was he, he played. I know, you know, the, the, the Frankenstrat thing, so he, he kind of changed a lot of things. But basically, what model of Kramer was he playing? Because they there were all these different headstocks. So um, it turns out, well, I'm not sure, but I think it was a Pacer. But the Pacer <laughs> headstock evolved quite a lot during the 80s. So it started off in 1981 with, with this headstock, which obviously looks very much like the Fender Strat. And apparently Fender quite quickly threatened to, to sue. So Kramer changed it to, in fact, this one, which um, you can imagine, you can imagine the big knob there of the Fender one. What they basically did is they cut the big knob off and, and ended up with this shape. From 82 to 84. 1984, they changed it again to the, the hockey stick style. And then in late 80s, they changed it again to this more pointy style. Because obviously pointy guitars were very popular in the late 80s. So a bit confusing. I think that I think that the pacer was you know, in its various guises, what Eddie had used for the basis of his Frankenstrat. Um, but no doubt, you guys that actually know a little bit more about that will tell me, please, in the comments, because um, 
I'd like to, I'd like to find out a little bit more. Okay, here's some specs for you. Um, this is the classic range, comes in scarlet red metallic, radio blue metallic, and this purple passion metallic. Looks nice, doesn't it? And, and, and it's properly affordable, as I said, 399 RRP, much less street price. So it's got, um, it's got, right, specs, okay. It's got an older body, you might be surprised to, to hear. Uh, it's got a maple neck, die cast tuners, <laughs> and some Allen keys fixed on the back. I'll show you what they're for in a bit. Uh, die cast tuners, it's got a licensed Floyd Rose tremolo. These are Alnico 5 double white <laughs> uncovered pickups. It's got two volume, one tone and a little three-way mini switch. So what we'll do in a, in a second is we'll take the strings off and have a closer look at the board and stuff. Before we do that, let's weigh it. Okay, here we go. It's not a lightweight, but it, it, it's only eight pounds. So it's not heavyweight either, is it? And that of course is 3.65 kilos. So yeah, it's a decent handful. Right, so this is where it gets interesting. I've got to take the strings off. So the Floyd Rose, as, as you can see there, I've got it nice and level. When I restring it, we'll, we'll talk more about that, but I, I think maybe you can, let's have a look if you can see. I'll, I'll do some B-roll so you can see what I'm talking about. This is kind of, it's level. It seems to be hinged at the front here by these two um, points. And it, you know, goes either way. Let's actually take the back off first. There you go. It looks it looks very similar to a Strat, doesn't it? It's got three springs, a block, and screws there that you can adjust the tension of the springs. And um, while we're here, I'll also take these allen keys off of the back of the headstock as you can see there unfortunately these oh i just was going to say you can't undo those with your hand no i can't do that one you have to use a, a screwdriver to loosen these because a coin doesn't fit that's what i was going to say and if you can't do them thumb tight well this is what i've found maybe i'm Trying to do them up too tight. Anyway, let's get these little Allen keys off. Flip it back over. Um, and obviously the strings lock at the top, at the nut, which is what one of the Allen keys is for. And uh, I'll show you what the other one's for later when we put the strings back on. But what I'm going to do before I remove these strings is, is try and keep this level, which should make it easier when I put new strings on. So, you know, if you look on the YouTube, there's various people that will <laughs> show you ways of doing it. Basically, things that they've stuck at the back of the trem there to stop it moving. I'm going to use <laughs> an Ernie Ball Super Slinky coaster, which has got cork on the back. So that shouldn't, it just about fits that. I'm going to put an added layer of a Gibson rag. Ooh. Ooh, that's good. Feels feels a little bit too much actually. I think that I think the rag is one layer too many. Let's try it like that. Yeah, there you go. I don't know whether that'll stay in place. <laughs> we'll find out in a minute. So what I'm gonna do is remove the uh arm, whammy arm, this screws in. There you go, get that out of the way. Let us loosen these three Allen keys blocks, three blocks that lock 
the strings at the nut. I might have to take them all, take them off completely, might as well. That's what that looks like with those removed. Okay, so I think um, it gets even more interesting. Now I discovered this at home. Let's loosen the strings first and watch, see what happens here. Nothing, I hope. I hope it just stays in, in place. Yeah. Now, my first surprise, because I didn't know this, how the strings go in. I broke a string. I saw I broke a string. One of the strings came loose while I was playing it at home. And uh, I'll show you what happens. Where's the, uh, it's the big Allen key. This string popped out. I thought it just broken. You loosen this. So these here lock the strings in place. Look, it popped out. I didn't, well, I thought, it, I thought I'd broken a string. I hope you can see that. Because uh, there was no ball, ball end. And I, I had no idea that you have to string this up without the balls. You have to cut them off. So I'll show you in a bit that all of these things here, you loosen these Allen keys, bolts, Allen bolts, that's the key, that's the bolt. I'll speed this up. So now you should be able to, what we'll do is we'll cut the strings now. And then each one comes out, come out of their little hole. Look at that. Uh oh. I wonder if these are connected or if they fall out if I turn the guitar upside down. <laughs> I might not take that risk. I'm going to, um, I'm going to do what I've got to do on this side and then we'll finish off and we'll look in the control cavity last. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense, doesn't it? Right, let's get these off. Right, first, the bald. Maple bald, maple neck, bolt on neck, maple bald, stuck on maple bald. Now, if you can see that, I'll do some B-roll. Stuck on top. Don't know why they do that. Cost saving, maybe. Um. They call them medium jumbo frets. They're not especially jumbo. They look a bit skinny to me. And they're they're a bit sharp. They're a bit it's a bit raw, a bit unfinished on the on the edges there. Um I'd need to take a little bit of a sandpaper or whatever to just the edges. You can you can feel them. But um you know, budget guitar, sort of to be expected. Might just be the temperature changes has caused that. Let me just quickly do something. A little bit of sanding stone in my box of tricks. It's quite easy actually to make a difference very easily. There you go, yeah, it feels better already. Sort of, sort of neat. There you go. Don't be afraid. I don't know what that's called, by the way. I'm going to call it sanding stone. There you go. Um, 25 and a half inch scale length, 12 inch radius. 
the ball, you can see there's marks on the board from my fingers and the, uh, the dirt that's come off the strings, or maybe it's the frets actually, has, has marked the, uh, the fretboard a little bit. I like to think if I carry on playing it as much as I have, we'll get some nice relic marks on my playing on the board. And look, they're right up here as well. <laughs> right up there. 19 fret. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll find out what that was all about in a little bit when I've finally put a new set of strings on. For now, um, they call it a... Hang on, I've got to refer to my notes for this. This neck is called Slim Taper K-Speed C-Shape. Uh, let's have a look at the neck profile and measurements now on the screen and see what that means. Okay, here's the neck profile and measurements at the first fret. And here's the neck profile and measurements at the 12th fret. Now that's interesting because in the website specs, it said that the nut width was like 41 point something mil. Whereas in fact, I've just measured it as over 43 mil. So I don't always believe what the official website says. Uh, and in reality, it feels nice. It feels nice. It's a, you know, it's nice flat sort of radius. Um, we'll see if it translated to fast playing in a bit. Okay, let's take some pickup readings. Uh, we'll start with the bridge. This is the bridge volume, incidentally. That's the tone. This is the neck volume. And the bridge reading is 8.88K. And the inductance of that is 3 0.08 Henry's over to the neck 8.58 kilo ohms and the inductance of just over three Henry's there you go middle reading because we can 4.36 K right I can't avoid the fact that I've now got to put a new set of strings on so let's do that see what happens Now, where should we start? I normally start on the D string for some, some reason. Oh, right. So, you cut the ball end off. I've never done this before, by the way. Well, apart from one, I changed, in fact, it was the D string. There you go. Hopefully these cameras are picking this up properly. You just put that in there. It'll only go in a little way. You get your Allen key. And you tighten up that Allen bolt. I don't know how hard you meant to do it <laughs> you got this um a string guide bar string tree they call them don't they a string bar i don't know what you call it on this there going under that Going on the D, so I'm going up to the two posts up. So this bit is probably just like normal. You put a little bit of slack in the string, and I'm going to go one turn over. And one turn under. I don't think you can see this, can you? I'll tilt a little bit and maybe you can. And then just take up the slack. There you go. So that's fairly normal. I'm not going to tighten them up too much. I'm going to do all the rest like that now. <laughs> we'll speed that up and I'll join you in a second.
Right. Strings are on, locked, loose. Um, the bar looks to be in the right place. They're all sitting quite comfortably nestled across the width of that, which I think is right. So let's start bringing them up to pitch first. I'll just sort of kind of do opposite sides to try and keep the balance across. In no particular order, but... Let's come out. Oh yeah, look, it's roughly... It's roughly in pitch pretty quick. So that trick of locking that worked. Let's get me pick out. thing I'm not sure about is, is is obviously stretching the strings so let's just the idea is you get it settled and then you lock the nut down with these things but I'm just gonna stretch the strings a bit first what I'm gonna do now because I'm sure that it will need a little bit more playing in before it settles. I'm going to lock these down. There you go. It's in tune at the moment, but I reckon that once we start actually playing it a little bit, it will drift. So we'll fix that when we come back and actually start playing it. We'll muck around with it a little bit and I'll, and I'll report back and show you anything that needs doing. Um, so there you go. Wow. wasn't as entertaining as it could have been really that good, was it? What we're going to do now is just going to flip it and have a look in the control cavity, see what's going on under here. I don't think I've ever seen pots as small as that before. Tiny little things, aren't they? Crikey. And a little tiny little micro switch. These are branded, looks like H with a Z in the middle. And um, here you go, there's a little tone cap there. Um, that's what that looks like, basically. All right, let's plug it in, see what it sounds like. See you in a minute. Okay, with a, a fair bit of faffing, it's in tune. That's what it sounds like unplugged. Yeah, it's quite, yeah, it's quite a faff. You have to get it in tune with this loosened a few times. Fine tune it. These are the fine tuners, if you didn't know that on here. So once that's locked, you can only adjust the tuning with these fine tuners. So it has to be there or thereabouts. Um, and I've, a couple of times I've started again, loosened off and tuned it up again. And I tighten the springs as well to try and get this as flat as I can. It's not very flat at the moment. It's a bit like that. Don't know if you can see that. <laughs> and I had a major <laughs> uh, worry. This, look, it's, it's not loose now. It's not moving that way. When I put this whammy arm back on, it was flopping around. The the bushing that this actual bar screws into had come loose and I couldn't for the life of me work out what it was and it was useless. It was like trying to wham in jelly. And uh, anyway, thanks to the old YouTube, I looked it up and there's a few people 
that showed you this the bushing that this bar screws into it's got an allen key on the back which you can access you take the back plate off and there's an allen key tying it up so if you've got a wobbly bar and you've been wondering what what the hell's going on that's all you've got to do well with this particular model anyway look you can actually see the can you <laughs> can you hang on what camera are we on yeah you can just about it's up <laughs> it's there up there so I've learned quite a lot and let's see if it's still in tune <laughs> well we'll see we'll um we'll have a go at playing some stuff um, on the ball today, same rig, I'm using the Princeton 65 because it's got clean head rims. So I'm using some drive pedals today for obvious reasons. And I've put the, um, the Boss Super SD1 Super Overdrive on the board. I think I'm going to give that a try because it gives us a bit of a bit of the sound we're looking for, really. And I've got a rat as well. I might, I might use that later. But as usual, you know, I'll show you. And um, I'm probably going to stick on the bridge pickup today, mostly. I'll quickly demonstrate what the pickups sound like clean, without any pedals, on the amp. <laughs> noticed is it's it's quite it's got a lot of low end on this guitar it's not that toppy so on on the you know the bridge here is you can hear that it's I say bottom end you know middly <laughs> middly and bottomy not toppy <laughs> So that's without any um, any pedals, just driving the amp. So it sounds all right, doesn't it? You could do quite a lot with that. Can't you? But if you put a bit of drive on it, it's... Let's have a little retune. I've, I've reached the end of my fine adjustments. I'm going to have to loosen that and tune the high E string up with the tuners. Bear with me. really seem right for me to do the normal sort of bluesy <laughs> southern rock noodling that I mostly seem to do. Although Eddie 
He's an interesting, um, <laughs> an interesting player. Yeah, Eddie Van Halen's an interesting player, isn't he? Uh, no, he's brilliant, isn't he? And um, obviously, I was that was me trying to play some of his stuff. So there'll probably be a copyright strike on this film. <laughs> I'm fully expecting that. Well, I suppose it'd be flattering if there is, because it means it will have sounded vaguely like him. But anyway, what, I'm, what I was going to say then was, um, I will show you. I'm going to do. The, I'm going to attempt this solo now, and it starts off. It's you know, it's got its roots in the same place as everything in the blues. Starts off with um, Johnny Be Good. Let me see if I can do it. This should be interesting. This is kind of throughout the week. I've been trying to learn this stuff. I've never played this stuff before. Never done. Never tried tapping before. I'm going to have a go now. Let's see if I can do it. Uh, I had a go, didn't I? Um, I think that, that's, that's all we need, isn't it? <laughs> let's, get, let's have a chat. There you go. That's, <laughs> that's my version anyway. I, I love it when I get a guitar that screams at me. This is what you're doing this week. You're learning this. <laughs> or you're trying to learn this. I always wish I had more time. I probably spent, I reckon I probably spent five or six hours trying to learn that stuff that you just heard, all new to me. Uh, great fun, great fun, because it shows you that you start, you know what it's like when you're learning to play something on the guitar? It's completely, oh, hang on, what's this? You know, where these, you know, even, you know, if you're, if you're a vastly experienced guitarist, um, I'm not saying I'm a vastly experienced. I, I probably consider myself intermediate. You know, I'm okay. I'm about as good as a lot of you. A lot of you are a lot better than me. But all of us, when you start to learn something, blimey. And then it's just, it's amazing how it then comes, isn't it? The more times you go through it and something that you just can't possibly do an hour later maybe or a day later or two days later, there it is, ish. <laughs> the hard work comes in when you, you then have to, you know, really woodshed it to, to get it sounding mint. <laughs> mint. Um, and I didn't have time to do that. So, you know, that's kind of, that's a shoddy eddy for you. But I had amazing fun. I had amazing fun learning it. I had a, I had a challenge, which is brilliant. You know, when you've got something you've got to achieve because it, 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 it stops you just sitting there mindlessly noodling, which a lot of us do too much, probably. So that was great fun. And um, I really enjoyed this guitar, obviously. Um, the tuning, obviously, was you know, pretty suspect on this. Um, and actually, as it turns out, I realised that I spent so much time in that talking about the various different bits that you have to undo and loosen and that when I took the strings off, I completely forgot to uh, to under, look underneath the, the hood uh, at the pickups. So I think it's only right to do that now. So if, if you don't like that nerdy stuff, skip to the next chapter when we'll sum up <laughs> what I think about this guitar. But for you nerds, I, I feel it's my duty. So... It shouldn't be as difficult on this one. Oh, hang on, I'm, oh no, I, don't, don't, I don't need my string cutters. What I'm gonna do, oh, I'll speed it all up. We're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to have a look underneath these pickups, aren't we? So first thing I'm gonna do is loosen these. I'm gonna do this without actually cutting the strings because all I, all I need to do is loosen the mirror, innit, and pull them out and then, in theory, 
I should be able to just pop them back in, tighten them up, and bush, where we can use the strings again. We'll find out. I won't, we won't bother doing that. What we'll do is we'll get the strings off, I'll have, have a look at the pickups, move on, sum up, go home, <laughs> and start again for next week. Oh, I forgot to do, don't you? I forgot me coaster. Bollocks. Oh, well. <laughs> That'll do. It's a lot to remember. <laughs> Right. Right. Let's uh <clears throat> let's have a look. See what's under here. Wonky screw. Yeah, this Kramer, of course, are owned by Gibson. They're a Gibson brand, so it looks like they make these Kramers in the same place as they make the the Epiphones, because they've always got often got wonky screws, haven't they? I can't resist the opportunity to have a little dig at Epiphone. I'm sorry. <laughs> Of course, me, me rag that I normally <laughs> put the pickups on is now trapped under the, the tremolo. So we'll just, um, yeah, I mean, this was, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> this was, I was going to say this is a waste of time, but these are kind of familiar pickups, aren't they? Let's uh, just do a close up of that. ROHS branded. Um, which I've seen on something else before. I can't remember what it is. But ROHS and that's an R, which, which probably means rhythm. There you go. And that's what it looks like in the cavity. Nothing much. That's all there is to it. I'm, I'm not going to bother doing the bridge as well. I just wanted to have a quick look. Um, okay. <laughs> Oops. What way around did it go? There you go. Nice looking. And these pickups... I thought they were quite, quite PAF-like actually. With before we sort of piled on all the, the gain. They were sounding quite nice, and and the readings kind of were were, were sort of PAF-like as well in terms of the, the the um the Ks the the killer ohms were around about eight K, weren't they? So and they look great. They do look great. So. Let's sum it up. I'm. It's not often that I'm left with a guitar on the bench. And loads of parts, <laughs> but yeah, there's quite a few here. Um, I'll put it back together later. Let's sum up. Great fun, really good fun. There are obvious uh, tuning stability issues with this. Look, you know the the full retail price of this is three hundred and ninety nine English pounds, which is probably four hundred dollars in the states, isn't it? I haven't looked, but around about that plus tax in the states. It's it's cheap to start with. And yeah, you know, street price. I bought this for half of that, so it's a proper cheap guitar. So I would say I'm not disappointed. I'm not disappointed to discover these things. There's a lot going on, and obviously they're using the cheapest versions they can. But this guitar, this is the classic version. Kramer also do what they would call an an original version, which is not. It's not twice as much actually. The retail price. Of the original version is 799 English pounds, and they do it in two colours, pearl white, and and this which they call orange tiger. I'm liking the look of that. I've suddenly got into pointy guitars, haven't I? I like that though. Um, 799 pounds, and just a quick look at the specs. All different. They've that's the original version's got a series has got a maple body. It's got Seymour Duncan pickups in that, um, a JB and a, an N, which are the 
really good set of pickups. I know because I've got those in one of my SGs. Um, it's got a better Floyd Rose and it's got a better locking system there. So it might be worth a look. In fact, I might, I might have a look at that myself because, um, well, I need, <laughs> it'd be good to actually carry on learning how to play that stuff properly, wouldn't it? And, and bring it back in, uh, in a, maybe a couple of months' time and uh, show you what I'm really made of. There you go. Just a thought for you. Um, great fun. I've been meaning to get one of these budget Kramers for ages because I've seen the prices and I thought, oh, that'd be, that'll be, well, that'll be fun. And it absolutely delivered. I think if you were thinking about getting this guitar to use seriously in a, in a band situation or something or recording, you might want to you might want to look at the higher priced version or be prepared to spend some time and money getting it set up properly. Maybe maybe the springs need changing. I, I don't know enough about it, but you know. As it is, it, it wouldn't have worked. You'd be a bit disappointed if you were, if you were trying to do a gig and you just got this. You'd, your bandmates wouldn't be happy. Let's put it that way. But apart from that, f for what it is, for me today, it absolutely delivered what I was expecting. And I've had brilliant fun uh, putting myself out of my comfort zone, learning some stuff, and it's inspired me to, 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 to carry on doing some of that stuff. And, um, and, and I don't suppose this will be the last... Floyd Rose equipped guitar that you see on the guitaristas. So um, there you go. The only downside about this particular review is, as, as I mentioned earlier, I'll probably get a copyright strike, um, which, which basically means that all of the revenue, all the ad revenue from this film will go to um, whoever owns the uh, copyright to those songs. So um, if you feel for me, consider, consider, please consider checking out the TV channel. And, and and subscribing there, joining us there. It's five dollars a month that supports all of this stuff, particularly in these times when I'm doing this stuff effectively for free. So have a look at that. There's loads of other stuff there as well, of course. And if like last week, you might have noticed I wasn't here on YouTube last week, but there was some stuff over on TV channel. In fact, I unboxed another surprise guitar. So uh, if you want to see what that was, Another one that's coming up for review soon here on the YouTube. Check it out. There's the address. It's 30 days free, so you can sign up, have a look, have a sniff around, see if it's for you. Check out the forum. Check out all the extra stuff, all of the jams that I put on there called Steal My Lick. Says, I think there's a 40, 40 of the jams from stuff I've done on YouTube isolated. So you can as I play along. Steal the licks that I've stolen from other people. So that's all there as well. So there's plenty of stuff to keep you entertained. And it's great value for $5 a month or $50 for a full year's support of the guitaristas. <laughs> I'm going now. There you go. Thanks for watching. Wherever you watch, you know that. It's appreciated. So um, keep doing it and I'll keep coming back and doing this bollocks, basically. So thanks again. Come back next week, same time, same place, see what we're up to then. I don't know. I'm going to go away and think about it after I've put all this back together. So, <laughs> See you later. Ta-da.
<laughs> there you go. Uh, I had a go, didn't I? Um, I think that, that's, that's all we need, isn't it? <laughs>